Hi, good morning. Welcome to this today's edition of Saturday School. I am Asar, also known as uh, um, Greg, Greg Stanton. I'm your facilitator for this weekly seminar, webinar, where we're dealing with uh, wealth, wealth creation. We're dealing with prosperity. I'm glad you've joined us. I hope you are in a safe space that you can uh, close the door and settle in and give your undivided attention to me for the next 30 minutes. Now, I really encourage you not to uh, multitask, not to play around on your phones, but to be present. And if you can't be present, go to that thing that's drawing you uh, and your attention. The word says a double-minded man or a person who shares their attention is unstable. And so many times, because we are attempting to do so many things at one time, you know that we end up not really having the powerful kind of life or the powerful kind of ex influence or experience that we're desiring to have. So I encourage each of you this morning, if you tuned in, tapped in, be present. If you can't be present, then just know that you can always get this lesson on demand. Well, today, uh, again, today is the um, Saturday of the week and we are dealing with the particular topic of prosperity. So those of you who have joined me, you should have gotten a email and that email has a image that says, wealth and your vibrational f frequency and that's what we're going to deal with on this morning so i'm glad you've joined me for Saturday school uh, where we continue to deal with the topic of prosperity today we're going to explore the importance of vibrational frequency and the melanated mind so grab your favorite morning beverage a pen some paper and hang your sign on your door saying do not disturb the teaching is entitled what you th what what you thinking freaking what you're thinking of frequently determines your frequency what you're thinking of frequently determines your frequency so i want to set the stage first of all by sharing with you a couple of things so, so this morning i'm going to be kind of be teaching out of a couple of books um, one book is spirituality before religions by F professor kaba hiawatha kameen I'm going to share something with you out of another book, The Ankh, African Origin of Electromagnetism by Nur Ankh Amin. Uh, so I'm going to share a little something out there. And then I'm going to also uh, really spend the majority of our time inside of a conversation regarding um, vibration. Uh, and I found this book, Money and the Law of Attraction, Learning to Attract Wealth, and health and happiness and I had I've had this book um, probably 20 some almost 20 years and basically the the book that I'm looking at is money and the law of attraction learning to attract wealth health and happiness many are many of you are familiar with this author Esther and Jerry Hicks the teachings of Abraham now we do know that um, Jerry Hicks passed some years ago and Abraham continues to be channeled through um, uh, through sister Esther there. So I'm going to start by sharing with you something out of spirituality before religions. Spirituality is unseen science. Science is seen spirituality. And I'm reading from page 113. For those of you who have the book, I encourage you to, um, uh, if you don't have it, to pick it up. Uh, first, I'm going to read one paragraph that says, the Memphite text um, structures the early African ideas about creation. Atom or creative word coming out of Ta, the primordial heel or energy system, who came out of none, the primordial waters like the, the field or material system, once united this trinity brought forth the essence of pre-existing order and arrangement. The eight definitional characters or characteristics of the cosmic universe that always existed but had not been brought into existence by Atom, or the spoken word, given each a name. In turn, these eight essences called for the essence of order and arrangement that created all the stuff that the cosmos is made up of, such as superclusters, clusters, galaxies, stars, and planets. Now, he goes on and he says in, in uh, the first paragraph on page 113, and I'm going to contextualize all of this for you shortly. One, the unity of the idea. 
That is none thought conception theory mind. So none is thought the conception of the theory mind with the act. Now the act is seen as the divine principle of pta, doing, implementation, or practice. Okay, I always tell you that transformation requires moving beyond information but application, and the application represents pta. Okay, um, so we see pta or the act of doing or implementation or the creating the word that's the tongue, commanding tongue, the power of the spoken word. Um, this process of becoming, all the while being guided by ma'at, which is truth justice, reciprocity, balance, righteousness, cosmic harmony. Ancient African scholars saw human reality resulting from thinking, doing, and speaking. So you should know this. Part of what we, our guiding principles or our distinctives here at Oasis Spiritual Center is control of thought, control of speech, and control of action. That leads to uh, a mature Asar man or an Asar, As, Asar man or an Asar woman, okay, a di divine, mature, melanated person. The symbol, now check this out, the essence of the creator is revealed as will, which is thought, and intent, which is command. The symbol for thought, now this is important, the symbol for thought in comedic symbology is heart. And command is tongue. So anything that list, that you see, the weighing of the heart is really the weighing of the thoughts. It's not weighing of the emotional essence of the person. It's weighing of the thoughts that an individual have held for their lifetime. Or I say that we should weigh our heart every night. We should look at what we've been thinking. We should look at our predominant thoughts. We should weigh our thoughts throughout our day. So this is right in line with what we're teaching today. So the symbol for thought is heart and the symbol for um, the command or to make something happen is the tongue. Heart and tongue become the personified aspects for the spiritual qualities of thought slash will and command slash intent. So that heart and that tongue should be working in collaboration to speak into existence the things that you desire to experience. Awesome, awesome. Put on your breathing device first. Okay, that's right. Somebody said that. That is that is right. So you better breathe. Come on, breathe. Exhale, inhale. Notice that the breath always start with the receiving. We live in an abundant universe that is always ever giving. And so many of us have not experienced or experienced this continual giving because we're not breathing. We're not taking it in, or if we're taking it in, we're trying to save it. We're not exhaling. So part of meditation is teaches you how to get present by breathing. We breathe in. <sighs> Then we exhale through the mouth, releasing, not out of fear that there won't be another breath or another uh, uh, substance called breath available to us or air available to us. So the universe is abundant. It gives us the essentials of life. And the most essential thing that we require is breath now. Okay, so I wanted to introduce you to that. Um, the Memphite theology is a... Uh, one of three um, theologies that is uh, attributed to the now Valley civilizations. Um, but they all have a lot in common. They all are have been mismatched and sometimes people don't know which what's contained in the Memphite theology, what's contained in the um, of the other two um, theologies. So I encourage you to get this book, uh, Spirituality Before. Religions, spirituality is unseen science. Science is seen spirituality by Professor Kaba Hiawatha Kameen. I'm going to see him in um, a couple weeks. I think next week I'll be in Detroit. Uh, we're going to take the jump in the Learjet and shoot up to Detroit and participate in the Hopi Conference. 
there in Detroit. I'm um, going to be some great uh, men and women of God uh, of source who melanated people um, with a uh, powerful conversation regarding what we need to do. So let me move us into today's teaching. Now, uh, in addition to that, I am talking about vibration today. I'm talking about energy. Again, I've mentioned this book, The Ankh, The African Origin of, of Electromagnetism by Nur Ankh Amin. And I wanted to just um, read something to you out of this book before I jump into um, this contemporary teaching this morning. If you're doing good, go ahead and type something in there so I know you're tracking with me this morning. All right, all right. So the spiritual or electrical, I'm reading the chapter on page 31 in this book entitled The Spiritual or Electromagnetic World. So the spiritual world is an energy world. The mysterious nature of source or God is central to Christian doctrine. For those who, like myself, um, have a, uh, we started on the Christian pathway and we um, don't find error in that it was a mistake. It's, we, we landed on that pathway and now we are expanding and unfolding. So I'm unapologetically um, melanated and unashamedly of the what they were tr traditionally called the Christian origin, but I call myself one who is in the way. Okay, um, so the mysterious nature of God is central to Christian doctrine. Most believers and their preachers maintain the mystery through ignorance and confusion. The various interpretations of the Bible leaves one wanting for a simpler, more practical version to a God of our understanding. Despite the many scientific discoveries into the nature of of the world, a separation between science and religion has prevented the understanding of anything spiritual from an objective point of view. This separation is the result of a pathology, pathological condition or pathology among non-pigmented people, or another word today we will use is non-melanated, which renders them in, incompatible of becoming in tune or in sensing these higher forces directly. Imprisoned by this condition, our non-melanated rulers' viewpoint on spiritual affairs cannot be trusted any longer despite its dom domination over more traditional nature-based religions or spiritual systems of the world. It is obvious that early Christians religious concepts came to Europe from the motherland, from the now Valley civilizations, as evidenced by the language used to describe the spiritual realm. Okay, so we have to understand that. Um, and he goes on and he describes it, but I just wanted to give you something to add to your reading list, uh, these two books, as we talk about vibration. Now, um, I've been really in this conversation for a very long time. A lot of people are just jumping on board with Esther Hicks, jumping on board with Abraham, um, jumping on board with channeled information. Uh, we were taught that to channel, that you are really um, operating in witchcraft. Uh, but all of those things were told to us by non-melanated people that did not understand the power of, of darkness. Now, you may say the power of darkness. Now, there's something you must understand. Where there's dark, there has to be light. Where there's light, dark is available. Now, we normally look at light and dark on two spectrums, one end of the spectrum being good, the dark end of the spectrum being bad. But there's goodness found in darkness also. Everything that grows, grows first out of darkness, out of the darkness of Egypt with the, the the Messiah call out of the darkness of Egypt. We are enlightened today with all of these teachings. So it's really important that we get to the place where we understand that we can't no longer let the narrative be controlled by good and bad Puritan thought. So this morning, so I have my, my vibranium on, I have my uh, piece of um, jewelry on this morning. I wear silver a lot. 
Um, this is silver, uh, and I also wear different gemstones determined, de depending on, on the feel today. So if you can't see the colors, it's green, and this jacket is green, and green for me also represents Asar, the, 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 the Lord of the Resurrection. Um, and it represents the the uh, nature, the things that as things grow, they they gr they go from green to full color. Awesome. So see if I got something here. Galaxy man. Okay, hey Minister Rogers, I'm glad you popped in this morning and let me know who that was. Um, feel free if you got a question um, to go ahead and, and put it in the chat, or you can raise your hand when we go into the green room. So I'm dealing with um, this morning. What do what do we mean by vibration? And I'm going to use as my source document so you can go back to it. Um, so, uh, something I found in this book this morning as I was just like meditating. I usually stand in front of my bookshelf and say, what am I introducing them to today? Now, some of you may be familiar with some of the things I, um, and sh uh, I, that I'm sharing. And if you're here because you're already familiar with, guess what? You mean, you're here also because you're going to get a deeper dive or another uh, aspect of this prism of light. When we speak of vibration, we are actually calling your attention to the basis of your experience. For everything is actually vibrationally based. Now, when I saw the movie, um, um, the, the, the movie that had to do with Wakanda, uh, the Black Panther, uh, what was this, this power source that they were going after? It was called Vibranium. Isn't that interesting? Vibranium. And that went over a lot of people's head. I'm um, talking about Vibranium. And in essence, what, he's, what the movie was dealing with is vibration, the power of vibration. And so you might want to rewatch that movie and pick up that lesson that's inside of the, the movie itself. Now, I'm, I don't know why I'm getting, I'm, I'm coming in and out blurred, but we're going to work on that. So, uh, we are actually calling your attention today to the basis of your experience, for everything is actually vibrate, vibrationally based. We could use the word energy also inter, interchangeably for that. Uh, and there are many other synonyms in your, in your vocabulary, my vocabulary, that we can use to accurately, accurately um, apply when we talk about vibration. We talk about vibration, we're in the family, we're talking about frequency. Um, it, it's important that you understand. Every word you speak is a vibrational um, signal. If we tend to look at words and then just look at the demeaning of the word, um, the literal meaning of the word, but the power isn't always in the literal meaning, but the power is always in the vibrational, the signal that your words send. Your words are either sending light, love, or your words are sending death to yourself in most cases. What you speak to others first uh, lands upon yourself. It goes out of your mouth. You got one mouth and you got two ears. So it picks up what you go, what goes out, what you meant for destruction for someone else. The law of reciprocity says what you send out is what you get back. Most understand that vibrational characteristics of sound. And that's kind of what I was talking to you about. Sometimes when the deep, rich bass notes of your musical instruments are played loudly, you can even feel the vibrational nature of sound. During the, uh, our, the period of our uh, enslavement, uh, physical enslavement, because many are still mentally enslaved, um, during the physical enslavement, it was outlawed, the, 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 the percussion or the drum was outlawed because the drum, the bass instrument, is a call to action. And so when they heard the drum, um, they knew that something was about to happen, but they couldn't interpret what the drum meant. So they said, here we go. We're going to do away with the drum. We want to understand that whenever you hear something, you are interpreting vibration into the sound you are hearing. So whatever you hear, there's a vibrational frequency that's associated with it. Example, there's some things that your dog can't hear. I mean, can hear that you can't hear, okay? So there are some sound frequencies that we can't pick up. Now, just because you can't pick up that sound frequency with the natural ear, doesn't mean that that sound frequency isn't impacting you on some level. That is why that we have to have a um, more well-rounded understanding of 
colors, of clothing, material, because you got to learn how to dematerialize some of the stuff you pick up through the day. Some of the stuff you pick up knowingly and most of the stuff you pick up unknowingly. Your entire person, your body is like a tuning fork. It picks up everything. Now you may not be aware of it, but you, your sensory self picks up everything and then it takes it through the neural system to the brain and it registers. Sometimes it's picked up in a way that is um, covert and the, the brain knows, example, it smells smoke or it hears a, a word uh, and it picks the signal up. Like yesterday I was in a, in a presentation and I, when it came time for me to do my piece, I was in a room full of, it was the majority of the people in the room was non-melanated, probably about 45 people. And so this was my first time at this meeting. Um, and, but I could sense, uh, looking at the crowd that they weren't accustomed to, um, dealing with non -mel with melanated men. And so I picked that up and I had to really get a grip on it to not allow it to impact my delivery or that I would not, because initially I said, Hey, I don't even need to be here. I'm bouncing. But Spirit said, no, you came here to do something. So I did what I had to do. So we have to know that we're sponges. We pick up not only what people say, we pick up what people think. Like you could be in a room and somebody has got evil thoughts or evil intentions. Or you could be in a room where somebody is adoring you, affectionately looking at you. And you can pick that up. And so, so I know a lot of sisters who um, I've talked to, they say when they are in a space and brothers are admiring them, they see it, they feel it, but they ignore them. Sometimes pay attention to sisters. Uh, I do it all the time. You can look at a sister and you can see that, that you know she sees you, but she's looking like she's not seeing you, but she feel you. See, words are vibrational in, in and vibrations can is not only moved by words, but vibration can be moved by thought. And that's like telepathy to be able to pick up something. Um, so vibration is something you got to pay some attention to each of your physical senses of seeing, hearing, let me back up. What you hear is your interpretation of vibration. So what you hear is your interpretation of what's vibrating. Now that can be influenced by what you believe, but when you know truth, you know that when I hear or that or feel that vibrational frequency and I don't filter it through my beliefs, but I filter it through the science of knowing now I have a deeper and a more correct understanding interpretation of how to respond. When you just believe you oftentimes find yourself just reacting each of your physical senses, senses of seeing, hearing, tasting, smelling, and touching exists because Everything in the universe is vibrating and your physical senses are reading the vibrations and giving you sensory perception of the vibrations. Now you may need to have your vibrational, a vibrational realignment. You may need to have like when you have a vehicle, especially here in St. Louis, when you're driving, um, the roads are terrible, terrible you will find yourself having to go to get a front end alignment. That is because you, you, your alignment is drawn, thrown off. And how you know your, your, your alignment is thrown off when you're driving down the, wheel, the, the, the road, you take your hands off the wheel and the car drifts to the left or drifts to the right. It's out of alignment because of the environment. You are out of alignment because of the environment you've been in for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years always picking up all this stuff. And for us who are of melanated, um, uh, of the melanated persuasion, we have picked up so much negativity towards us. Even when we are in positive environments, we are picking up the negativity that is being broadcasted towards us. So one of the things we have to learn is don't give credence so much credence to what other people think about you, especially non melanated people, especially people who are not part of your circle. If that, what they have don't help you, that means what they have will hurt you. All right. Okay. And so as you come to understand that you live in a pulsating vibrating universe of advanced harmonics 
and that the very core of your being, like, okay, somebody said, I just hear somebody say, I thought he's talking about wealth. I thought he's talking about money. I'm talking about currency. Currency is money. Currency has a current. If you see a penny on the ground, your vibrational frequency registers it, but it won't pick it up. But if you see a, a, maybe a, a dollar piece on the ground, a silver dollar, you are going to pick that piece of currency up. So money is currency. Symbols are picked, sim, symbols send a vibrational frequency. When you look at a hundred dollar bill, it sends a very different frequency than a one dollar bill. Know that. And so it's important that you keep your bills separated. Keep your ones with your ones, your tens with your tens, your twenties with your twenties, your hundreds with your hundreds. And if you happen to have a 500, keep your 500 separate. One, you might make a mistake and give it to somebody you don't want them to have it. And two, you want to just make sure that your money has its greatest frequency and like attract like. So that's, that's a freebie. So you got to come to understand that we're in a pulsating universe, okay? And that the very core of your being, you are vibrating at what could only be described as perfection in vibrational balance and harmony. Then you begin to understand vibration in the way that I want to project it on this morning. So that's important that you got to know that I am a vibrational frequency. If you ever get the opportunity to look at, let me see if I can find a, a, a image for you. Uh, it's called the jet. It's also known as the backbone or the spinal cord. Uh, let me see if I can find, I thought I saw an image of the jet in this book this morning and I want to show it to you. Yes. Okay. So if you're looking here at this, this book here, there's an image right here. Do, 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 do this image here, this image where well, I'm trying, I'm doing it backwards here. This image here, even though it looks like it get, has arms to it, take the arms away and take the, okay. The thing across the top looks like it has frequency or it looks like water, um, which re represents frequency. And this image is known as the DJ, um, the jet. Okay. Uh, and it's like a conductor. And when you talk about the resurrection, uh, we, as we in the resurrection week here, um, it, it's, it's the, when the, when some, someone in comedic thought was resurrected, a symbol of resurrection was the upright Dejed, or it's also the upright Tekum or many Tenekum Tekum that many of you call the, um, or obelisk. It's not an obelisk. It's a Tekken. It represents a, the phallus symbol. It represents a penis. Most people don't understand it and know that. And the, the, it's a life-giving source. And when you look at the uh, Ankh itself, the Ankh represents both the Tekken um, or the obelisk, what we would call the obelisk here. And then it also represents the, uh, the Yaniverse or the, uh, the womb of a woman. Um, which represents life and then you have the crossbars which represents balance and we have to have a, a balance of male and female interaction in anything that's going to produce properly there has to be a balance of male and female energy now i just want to share that with you as we move forward all right everything that exists in your air my air our air in dirt in water and in our bodies is vibration in motion. And all of it is managed by the power of the law of attraction. Now, the law of attraction of is one of many laws, or I usually look at the laws of attraction inside of 12 principles, 12 laws. Even though there's 12 laws, they're really not 12 distinct laws. There's 12 manifestations of one law. There's only one law. It's the universal law. That's the word uni means one universe, one verse, one unifying verse. That's what we have to understand. The Lord thy God is one. For those who know scripture, the law thy God is one. The law of source is one. The law of laws is the unifying force of the power of one. That's what Christianity is about, reconciliation. Most people don't understand it. It's about reconciling man who has been born into this earth realm back to what it has come 
while at the same time remaining in this realm, remembering. It's like you are dematerialized to materialize into this realm, and now you have to go back and fetch it. Sankofa, you got to go back and come into the realization of who you are, who you are, and what you came here to do, be, have, and experience. Now, back to vibration. So everything is vibration and it's part of the central force behind the law of attraction. You cannot sort it out if you want it to. I mean, you can't separate it. And there is no need to, to try to separate it because the law of attraction is doing the sorting continually bringing things of like vibration together while things of different vibrational natures are being repelled. And sometimes we try to force two vibrational frequencies that are opposing to coexist. Now, the balance is, example, melanated, non-melanated people and everything that's in between operates best when they are allowed to uh, flow in their frequency. Then we learn how to harmonize our frequencies around other people, not to say one frequency is better than the other, but depending on the conditions, a particular frequency is the most optimal frequency to be operating at level. But we have been taught to dummy down. Like we think melanin has no use other than uh, melanin is only about synthesizing the sun. Melanin synthesizes more than the sun. Melanin also operates in the unseen realm of darkness. Melanin operates, matter of, matter of fact, your melanated self is regener regenerated through darkness, through sleep. Uh, so we have to really begin to redefine the conversation specific to us. That's why I have no problem with um, being separate but equal giving me the opportunity, giving individuals the opportunity to celebrate. There's time when men need to come alongside and just be with men. There's time when women need to be with women. There's times when families need to be with families. There's time when married couples need to be with married couples. There's a time when we, when we are with our affinity group, when we can uh, express in our fullness. When I, as a male dealing with a female, I have to be hypersensitive to the words I use, um, to the things I say. That's why a lot of domestic violence, now I'm not signing off on domestic violence, but most people don't understand that men pick up the vibrational frequency of words and words are a call to action. That's why if you get two men going at it long enough, it's already gonna be settled with a fight. And so when you have two different frequencies, the female frequency and the male frequency and the female frequency is emitting all these words, you are really charging that brother that may not have the ability to maintain and control himself to do something that is part of his nature. Now, a lot of times people don't want to hear all of that. They think, yeah, you, you, hey, I can say what I want. You can say what you want to say. This is true. But you also have to know you reap what you sow. Your words has the ability to bring back into your life things desired and things undesired. Now, I'm not signing off, and that wasn't about um, that any women deserve to be hit or whatever, but it helps brothers to understand, hey, I'm more likely to be pushed to a call to action when I get in a heated engagement with this person, this, this, these, this energy. I'm going to make sure I bridle myself and don't even go there. Like brothers, no, we don't just argue for a long time. I, hey, you're going to say what you're going to say. I'm going to say what I'm going to say. If it goes beyond it, it's like, so what we're going to do? Let's get, we're not going to take this into tomorrow. We're going to end this today. All right. So this, my, my conversation is about melanated people. So you may not understand that if you're not melanated, but search that matter out. Now, some things I don't have to go in deeper to because if you're melanated, you feel me. All right. Okay. Um, your emotions which really are the most powerful and important of your six physical vibrational interpreters, your emotions, give you constant feedback about the harmonics of your current thoughts or your vibrations as they compare with the harmonics of your core vibrational state, that is your resting state. The non-physical world is vibration. The physical world that you know is vibration. 
There's nothing that exists outside of this vibrational nature. Nothing exists if it's not vibrating. Your, your understanding of vibration will help you to continuously bridge both worlds. What worlds? The seen and the unseen world. Emotions has to do with feelings. And there's a place that emotion plays that is significant in creating wealth. Now, you do not have to understand your complex optic nerve or your primary visual cortex in order to see. Like most of us don't understand our optic nerves or our cortex, how it operates. We don't understand how our brain operates. We don't understand how our sensory system operates, our pulmonary system, but we're living, we're breathing, we're functioning. Just because you don't understand it won't stop it from working. But here's what we should be doing as mature individuals, learning how things operate. And when you learn how things operate, you can operate within those things better. You won't be running off the mouth. You won't be saying everything that you, you feel like saying. You will understand that my words are my wand. My word creates the power of my life. Now, you do not have to understand electricity to be able to turn on the light. <laughs> how many people know how many votes going into their wall? You just understand some things about simple things. I understand if I want light, I flip the switch up. If I want power, I plug it into the wall. May not understand how the power got to my house. May not understand that the power coming into my house is different than the power that's running through my house. But I understand enough to use it. Okay? But we want to move from being users uh, to being masters of this, this melanated mind we have. We want to be masters of it. So you don't have to understand electricity to be able to turn on light and you don't have to understand vibration in order to feel the difference between harmony and discord. You just know what you know. As you learn to accept your vibrational nature and begin to consciously utilize your emotional vibrational indicators. So you want to learn how to consciously utilize your emotional vibrational indicators your feelings tell you whether or not what you are affirming is going to come to pass your feelings tell you whether or not that person who's just in the into the room has your highest or greatest good in mind pay attention to your feeling self now when your feeling self has been um or your vibrational self has been has the two men out of alignment. Example, if you're in an environment where every person of a certain hue does negative things to you over the course of time, you will, your, uh, your feeling meter will be stuck on when I see that, that particular, um, type of individual, I need to be very cautious. So you, then you become a hyper vigilance, but we got to be careful with that because every, I'm not one to say that all non melanated people are, are, are at, are, are, are a danger for us. But I do know this looking at history for a certain period, the history of non melanated people has not been favorable to mel to, to melanated people. So I keep that in mind, although I do have encounters with individuals who have done the work, who've been a, around maybe melanated people for long enough to demystify, to demythify some of the things that cause them to act in a certain way. But I am always mindful. That's always in the back of my head because I know there's a possibility the fox may get hungry <laughs> and the fox eats the rabbit. So when the fox and the rabbits hanging out, the only person that's really at risk is the rabbits. So watch your rabbits just eat the money. Morning. Okay. Um, so I'm going to say that one more time. As you learn to accept your vibrational nature and begin to consciously utilize your emotional vibrational indicators, you will gain conscious control. There is conscious control, conscious control, awareness of your personal creations and the outcomes of your life experience. So you have in your life what you've created. So let's stop giving other people more power than they should be ascribed to. So let's stop going through life as a victim. There are some people may say, well, you are taking the responsibility out of the hand of somebody who did something. Well, we still hold them accountable in our conversation. And what difference is that making? People are still doing what they want to do. Okay. So what you have to be control in control of is the thing that you're in control of. You create the world 
in which you live. You attract into your life those who you believe will be coming towards you. If you believe all non-melanated people are diabolical and are evil, you're going to attract that type of non-melanated people into your life. That's simple as that. And sometimes you are projecting onto others your own stuff. Now, I want us to walk, live and walk in ma'at. I want us to learn to really use the power that we have in a way that brings harmony, not into our only, into our worlds, but to the worlds of individuals that engage us. So this morning we are talking about or have been exploring vibration as its role in our um, prosperity paradigm. If you are been inside of a paradigm or environment that has been steeped in poverty and lack, your vibrational set point is such and you attract that no matter how much money you make, no matter how many degrees you've got and you've moved away from poverty physically, you're still resonating at the poverty paradigm. That's why I believe the word says, let a man examine him or herself. So you have to, don't just go creating because you're going to become frustrated. So what you have to learn to do is first take an inventory. You take an inventory of who you are, what your experiences have been. I got a, we got a little, let me see here if I can help this thing out. Okay. There you go. I'm coming back into focus. Um, my vibrational frequency was such that I began to move so fast that I'm breaking up off the screen and going dematerializing. You just hear a voice and ultimately I'll be gone. No, I'm joking with you all. Um, so you have to learn to find out your set point. What vibrational frequency are you on? Are you on the continuum of the, or the, on the, on the, um, the line, the lower continuum of this energy? that shows up in lack, or are you on moving towards the upper end of the spectrum where it shows up in, pro in, in prosperity? But know that you gotta learn how to operate through all the levels, of, there you go, all the um, areas of the spectrum, because you may end up in a season um, where you're not, in, you're not uh, um, in the poverty mentality, but you're going through a season of dry season. How do you deal with the dry season? You know, you don't deal with it like the world. You always remember there is abundance. I have, I smell rain. I got to get to where the rain is flowing. Sometimes when there is a lack in the, where you are, it's also the universe saying it's time to move. Okay. Sometimes we got to be like, if you want to live in the sun, you move with the sun. You can't stay in Chicago all four seasons if you want to experience the sun. You have to know that there's one season that I can experience the sun. And then if you're a sun chaser like me, then I'll go somewhere else. And if I want to experience the sun most of the time, I go to the sun city. I go to Phoenix, Arizona. So that's all I have this morning. I hope something was said that was uplifting and encouraging. Again, three books I recommend for you this morning. Um, if you want to buy the books or if you want to just YouTube them and see if you can find information um, by uh, Nur Ankh Amin, The African Origins of Electromagnetism. That's one book. Um, this book I do highly recommend. I get nothing from recommending it. Uh, spiritual, spirituality before religion. Spirituality is unseen science. Science is seen spirituality. If you can buy this book, buy it from a black bookstore, a melanated bookstore by Professor Kaba Hiawatha Kameen. I, I recommend that book. And most of you know, you can go to YouTube and type in Abraham um, law of attraction, and you're going to come up with, um, this, this, this book or teachings by Abraham, um, through the personage of Abraham and Jerry Hicks. Uh, I, I like that. I have many, um, different copies of their writing. So that's all I have this morning. We are right at, where are we at? We're right at the top of the hour. So I'm going to shift into the green room. Um, if you're in the zoom room and you got a question, you want to, um, engage me on. Let's make sure less happens right now. Now, for those who joined me this morning, you want to know more about Oasis Spiritual Center for Divine Living? I encourage you to go to the website, oasisspiritualcenter.com. At the website, you will find everything you need to know about this ministry, about who I am, 
uh, I'm, I'm MZ, which is why I'm the wise elder. I'm the MZ in the group, okay? Um, don't need a lot of titles. Just MZ is a West African word that means wise elder. So I take that on. I got the grade approved. I got the age. So I'm stepping into that season of my life. Asar just means the transformed one, uh, walking in the divine ex excellence of the divine masculine. Now, also, if this has been a blessing to you, why don't you consider being a blessing to me? I don't operate like those who are in Patreon. I don't say, give me $2 or put $5 in. I do teach the law of circulation. I teach this, you reap what you sow. If you want to re receive ones and twosies and threesies in your life, sow at the level of ones, twosies, and threesies. Now, I'm saying so where you have gotten value from. If you desire to be a blessing to this ministry this morning, go to the website, Oasis Spiritual Center. Go ahead over to the giving tab and you will find the different avenues by which you can sow. If you're on the YouTube channel, go down here into the description and you'll find the avenues by which you can give. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to leave a comment, the comments you make bring this virtual world into reality because I try and, and respond. So let us go into the green room. All right, that's the back room. I see one hand up. All right, one of my favorite people. Uh, all you people is my favorite people. Good morning, Courtney. How but I wanted to ask, how do you know if you are still in a lack paradigm or if you're just going through like a residual dry season? How do you oh. know? That's a good question. First of all, if you've never done um, a belief system orientation, if you never looked at uh, what shows up in your family of origin, um, if you've never taken time to look at what you know, what what's your patterns have been, most likely you're still in it. Because the universe, Earth School, does not pass you on from one vibration to the next vibration until you learn the lesson of that vibration. And so even being in poverty uh, at some seasons in our life is a teachable moment for us when we don't take it on as um, a um, something you're resigned to for the entirety of your life. When you come into, when, when, the prosper, when the poverty bumps up against the truth of abundance, now you begin to do the work of coming out of poverty. Um, you become a self-made millionaire. People say you can't be a, you are a self-made millionaire. You are self-made in anything you've done because until you take the position to be the best you, you will not do it. So, um, so the, so then there are seasons you go through. Um, uh, if it's a season you go through, you're going through, you are not going to be stuck. You're not going to be, um, you're not going to be allowing or negative thoughts won't be running through your mind. When it's just a season, you just get through the season, keep it moving. That's why the scripture says, in whatever state I am in, I learn to be a base and how to abound. All right. And then not be in judgment of yourself to say, I should have beyond be beyond this. No, you should be right where you are. You're always where you need to be. Now you create from where you are to where you want to be. And when you create from where you are to where you want to be, Guess what? You begin to show up as you ought to be because it happens like that. Does that help? That helps tremendously. Thank you so much. Awesome. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get in the gym myself. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna make, <laughs> this week I'm gonna get in there at least one time. I'm gonna get Come in there. Now. I'm gonna get in there and I'm gonna look around and see what's in there. <laughs> oh Lord. <laughs> no, I'm gonna get in there and get it in. All right, good, good. Awesome. It's good to see you all. Uh, is there any other comments? Okay, let me see. I'm gonna go over to the YouTube. Um, let me go over to see if I can get into YouTube. Um, one second here. Okay, I gotta go take my Mac over and get it cleaned up because I'm having a hard time doing certain things that I shouldn't have a hard time doing. Uh, let me see if I hit escape. This should. Okay, no. So I can't go over to YouTube. Um, so if there's any questions, if there's anybody on the Zoom room also in the YouTube, is there any questions I need to be answering from on, on that side of the platform? If not, I'm going to... Okay, here you go. What tools do you recommend to start to change your vi vibration? Awareness of self. To begin to be aware when you feel a strong vibration. When you feel 
butterflies, when you feel um, emotions. First of all, let's move our emotional vocabulary beyond um, um, the simple words we use. So I would look up words that express emotion. That's one thing. And begin to familiarize with those yourself because each one of those words express a truer sense. You may not be angry. You may just be uh, concerned. But when you say I'm angry, that emits a whole different vibrational frequency. So we want to first increase our emotional vocabulary. That's a good thing to do. Um, the other thing to do is to, uh, once you are aware of what, what frequency am I operating on? Am I operating in a frequency of fear? Am I operating in a frequency of, of hatred? Am I operating of a frequency of love? Am I uh, all over the place? Cause I'm so reactive. So you, you really have to do some internal work, um, getting to know yourself. And the word says, man, know thyself and to your own self be true. So that's where, where it starts. Thank you. Peaceful one for that, that, um, question. Um, let me see here, see if I got anything else in, in the feed here is the best way to change our frequency, change what we think and say frequently. Yeah. Now I like that Tia. Thanks for reminding me in my tagline. I said, what you think about frequently tells you will, will dictate your frequency. What you think about frequently will dictate your frequency. Now, people may say, well, I think about money all the time, but then behind the, the catalyst behind your thinking about money is lack of money. And that's what you're going to get up. Now, if you, the, if the fact you're thinking about money because you got so much money or you just, you know, you have so much joy and it's gratitude statements, then you're going to get more of it. But not only what you say, but the intent behind what you say is what's going to draw your, your, be your vibrational emitting system. Uh, so I hope that hope helped you there. Okay. That's all I have is we about to land this thing. I thank you as you begin to deboard or uh, get off the plane today, take your time, watch your steps. Um, know that your steps are ordered by the Lord, by the law. And until we meet again, until we greet again, have a wonderful day for those of you who